How come you went to the Jarong area? What was the purpose of the trip? Well, it was the area that, as a, you know, when I was at school, my dad took us to the nearest area to, to Chengdu. Yep, sorry. And that was the Jarong area. And the Tibetan area was beyond. Yes. So you, when you were a child with your father, you would go to these areas too? He used to take us traveling. When you were a he child. thought it was good for us. <laughs> what an amazing father. Yes, a marvelous father. And we traveled. We climbed very quickly, but he, he climbed slowly and took many rests. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'd play around waiting for him to catch up with us. <laughs> mm. And who sponsored you to go to the Tibetan regions in Sichuan? Oh, he was, he was one of the ruling class. Was he Chinese or British or? No, he was Tibetan. To ah, so a Tibetan sponsored you to go and do an anthropological study. Yeah. Tibetan yes, areas. Yes. And why did they want you to do that? They didn't want me to do that. I wanted to do that. Ah, so you. The asked. reason they were willing to do it is mm -hmm. because my father, they were, the leader was a friend of my my dad's because yeah. my dad was in charge of the museum in the West China Union University. Yeah. And he collected a lot of, he, this was his job, collecting uh, cultural things from the different areas. So this was his contact yeah. uh, who provided these things. Of course, he must have made money through that too. Yeah. You know. To the Tibetan areas, who did you travel with? The first time I traveled with uh, an, a missionary who was more like me. She was more interested in the culture. She wasn't interested. When, we, when she went off with me, you know, she was going off as a missionary, but she never tried to make a, a single convert. Yeah. She never gave any talks or, about religion. Yeah. She was just uh, uh, trying to learn as much as she could about the local culture. Yeah. So we were both anthropologists, actually. Yeah. Did he was you? 42 and I was 21. I remember her age because it's just double my Double yours. Age. Could you both speak Chinese then? Yes. How did you travel to this area? Walked. From where to where did you walk? From your home town? Well, from Chengdu to the entry to the mountains. Yeah. You can go by bus. Yep. Actually, I usually went by bicycle because I could leave my bicycle there and then cycle home. Yeah. And that was very, it took two days to cycle there. And the middle area was bandit area. Yeah. So it was quite a tricky place to go to. But I don't know, I didn't. You, you, I rode, didn't. you rode your bike through bandit area? Yeah. But. You weren't scared? But dangerous areas are dangerous to some people and not to other people. But I, I would mean, have thought... The, the dangerous areas are where they want to rob, rob people or capture people and make them slaves or things like that. Yeah. So if you... If you're a foreigner, they would be quite cautious <laughs> because they knew if a foreigner was captured, probably the foreign community would <laughs> get that person back, wouldn't let that person be left in their hands. Yeah. So uh, they're a bit cautious about taking foreigners. So, so you rode your bike. Yeah, I rode my bike just on the flat plain. Yeah. With a flat plain, very easy to cycle on, right, from Chengdu to the uh, local uh, head of the of that particular county. How did you get up the mountains though? Because you just were climbing, just climbing. Yeah, and getting across the rivers is there were uh, often there were swing bridges. You know those uh, that just they throw they they're on one side and they th throw this stone that ha the, the rope that has a heavy 
weight on that side, they throw it across the river and then they fasten it there. And then they can make a swing bridge. I love those swing bridges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Nai Nai. That's Nai Nai? Yeah. Who's Nai Nai? She's a sister of the head man. Yep. And when he promised, he said, you can live in my house. But the house didn't, it was a haunted house and there was nobody in it. So he asked his sister to come over and keep the house and be my hostess. So this is, she came over from her own place and lived with me. She brought her grandson as well. So that three of us lived in this. And my, uh, four of us, because I had a companion, a Chinese companion. And the house was haunted? The, the haunted what house. Did, what sort of things happened in the house? Did anything happen? That's a very interesting story, but yeah. uh, I must get it straight. Anyway, his idea was that the communist should be lured to attack his haunt, his house. It wasn't haunted. Yeah. To his house, and uh, by saying uh, we we support the communists, so you can you can stay in our house. Yeah. Uh, but actually, they wanted them up in the house so they could seize them and kill them at, at night. But they didn't recognize that the communists are not so stupid as to just go to bed there and be sleeping and sprung upon. They would have their guards. and they, You know, soldiers don't just go to sleep in strange houses. Yeah. So they were the ones that got killed. In the big, in the, they were, yes, they sprung upon the soldiers, but the soldiers immediately got up and there was a fight, and they were the ones that got killed. What, what year was this? 30-something. 39? I don't remember exactly, I think but Michael it's in my, it'll be in my notes. Michael said 1939. Yes, yes. those were the ghosts. Of the Tibetans that had been killed the Tibetan, by the yes. It, uh, it only took place when I was uh, on my way there. Yeah. Because like I was going to stay there. Yeah. And then this incident took place. Well, in our household, because we were in a haunted house, we only had the child brought over by the a child. By, the, by the grand by the grandmother to keep how, her company. How old was the child? Uh, but, uh, oh, 11 or 12. Were they any good at helping you? Well, they weren't supposed to help me. They were well, just supposed to look, help the grandma. What did you think of their culture? Is it very different from the culture you had seen? Yes, they, they had a, a religion uh, which had devil dancers and all that. Yes, and, then they, and these people, these monks, come out, they're the audience yeah. for the devil dance. Were the kids, were children frightened at all through the devil dance? Oh no. no the devil dance is something delightful. Yeah. Yeah, it's something you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember that little boy was with us and uh, as soon as the devils came out, you know, looking all what? Oh, oh, there's uncle, that's uncle there. There's uncle. <laughs> no fear of the devil. Yeah. They recognize them as their relatives. These are the Li, the Li uh, national minority. Li national minority. Li, uh, well, what the Chinese call lolos. Yeah. They were the black lolos are the aristocracy and the white lolos are the low cl laboring class. Jarum uh, wear a, the women wear a thing on their heads with the braids, their yeah. braids crossing over. And the lolos, it depends what class you are, whether you're the ruling class or lower class. And this is a ruling class woman. What would be her role in society? What would she do? 
What would she'd run the, the household. She'd be the madam of the household. And how many in charge of the servants and the lower class people and the relatives, yeah. Um, and what would the family do for money? Well, her husband would be the head. Oh, the people themselves. Yeah. They're farmers. All farmers. Mm -hmm. They farm the hillsides, but they're farmed by their labor. By their, they own the labor. Yeah. And many of the laborers are, are, are slaves, and they put them up. They have to, they have to uh, house and feed the, these slaves. How many slaves did they have? I think they had about 12, 